Thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Rufile. Um, I will take it from here. We can move uh, further to the commanding slide as we move on. Um, with regards to the International Engineering Alliance, uh, as it states, and um, I just wanted to go back as to why is EXA there? So se Section 13E of the Engineering Professions Act allows the Engineering Council of South Africa to may establish mechanisms for registered uh, persons to gain recognition of their qualifications and professional status in, in other countries. And that is why EXA is a member of the IEA or the International Engineering Alliance. Now, who's the IEA? This is a global non-profit organization which comprises signatories and members. And I'll talk about the, the all there between the signatories and members from 42 jurisdictions within 30 countries. And this information is as accurate as at the 20th, as, as in, in the, the 30th of June, 2020, because at IEA, we normally have uh, meetings uh, the last week or the middle week of June across the international agreements. These international agreements govern the recognition of engineering educational qualifications through the educational accords and professional competence through the, uh, the competence agreements. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that as we go further. Okay, by being a signatory or a member of the International Engineering, the advantage is that through the educational accords and competence agreements, signatories or members of the IEA establish and enforce internationally benchmarked standards for engineering education and expected competence for engineering practice. Let me just maybe explain that. Um, the, the jurisdictions or country members or countries that are member, the word member is used uh, in generic and then the word signatory is for the educational accords and in the competence agreements where the registration takes place that is referred to as the members and that's, that is why the distinction advanced uh, educational quality and enhanced global mobility within the engineering profession. And if you remember Lebu on her slide referred to the, the, the global mobility, I'll touch on that. So they, they, that is where we are now. This is just a simple schematic representation of the educational accords and the competence agreements. First, we'll start with the three educational accords. As you can see, Lebu referred to that her qualification came from an international a university or country where which they were not members or I mean signatories to the Washington Accord. As you can see, for the four-year BSc degree or the honors de and the honors degree, those that do straight like that, it is from the Washington Accord. Like UK, for example, have got the three-year uh, Bachelor of Engineering plus uh, the two-year Masters that uh, equates them for, so to be registered as uh, eligible for registration as chartered engineer. So that's where the the uh, the qualification standard of the so that guys to the engineer come from in the Washington Accord. For the engineering technologies, it is a Sydney Accord to what we have in South Africa at the moment, which is the, the Bachelor of Technology or the BTEC or equivalent with the, the previous National High Diploma for the new HQSF qualifications of which last year the IEA reviewed us from those two uh, accords and we were okayed for the coming six years with regards to that. And the Dublin Accord is more for the engineering technicians, though that hold a diploma. As you can see on the new landscape of the higher qualifications subframework, we have the higher stiff case and advanced stiff case that somewhere along the way with uh, some years of experience leads to that. So, but this is basically on the current and existing national diploma. So those are the three educational accords that are referred to. So EXA is a signatory to those three accords at the moment. Equally, so when it comes to registration, it is referred to as the competence um, agreements in terms thereof, or they used to be called the, mobi the mobility agreements because they, they are the ones that make people to be able to get move around other jurisdictions that are members of the IEA. First, we've got the International Professional Engineers Agreement for the professional engineers. So coming with a, a qualification from the Washington Accord, go and work for minimum three years, get registered, then the recognition comes there on the international register in there in the prof inter international professional engineers agreement. Equally so, the Eastern Bloc or the Asia Pacific Bloc have developed a similar mode that is the same as the international professional and professional engineers agreement that they call the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation uh, Engineer Agreement or APEC, whereby it is more of a regional agreement among those countries. We are not a member of that due to geographical position because we are not in the Asia Pacific. 
so but it's, it's a more or less a copy and paste then but this uh, of the ip uh, which is more used as a regional agreement as well then we move further then we've got the international engineering technologist agreement aita uh, that is for the engineering technologies so those that come from the sydney accord qualification that is accredited at the international level then they can come on the international register via that so how that works is that uh, let me just maybe cover the last one as well so that i can talk about them in totality so for the same, the new one that was established in 2015 is the International Engineering Technicians Agreement or AYET for the, supposed to be for the engineering technicians. Now, how this work is that the, uh, all of them, um, these agreements are the ones that give mobility. The educational ones are more for mobility when you want to study further in those countries that are the signatories. But when it comes to competence, it will be on the competence, on the four competence mobility agreements. And uh, you'll see on the next slide, we'll refer to which are those countries because it's not a given that is all of the countries of the world. You can move to the next slide. Ah, there we are. So this map, uh, as you can see here, shows the establishment of the Washington Accord, where it started. The Washington Accord was started in 1989 by the six countries. If I start on the Western side, it was the USA, Canada, move further the North Island, UK, and come south to the extreme. Australia and New Zealand. And South Africa missed the opportunity at that stage. So 10 years later, in 1999, South Africa came on board to become a member of the Washington Accord. What that means is that all those qualifications that were received in South Africa before the attainment of the Washington Accord are not recognized under the Washington Accord. So if you go to another country with those qualifications, it will be up to that country to accept that qualification or you go through the educational uh, uh, evaluation for them to be accepted. As you can see, what it shows them, the full signatories are those that are shown in a black color and the, the, the yes in bracket is when these countries joined or were accepted as the full signatories of the Washington Accord. There are seven of them that are the provisional signatory. So in the provisional signatory, these countries are still like a label referred to the candidates. They are still candidates before they can join. So they don't enjoy the benefits of uh, recognition because they are still sort of under training to make sure that their registration, I mean, their accreditation system is acceptable and is on the same level of substantial equivalence to other signatories. So as you can see, it, has, it consists of 28 uh, signatory both full and provisional. So this is the biggest and it is growing as you can see on the western side, Chile came on board, Peru, uh, Costa Rica just, uh, uh, just came on board this year as well. So it is growing and as you can see most of those that um, have been there for some time as well. You can move to the next one. So equally so coming from there, now this is a distinction that if I don't know if you picked that up. If you check on this one, the International Professional Engineers Agreement, is that for if you are on the international register, and I'll talk about it later, you can only go and work where by in those countries where you are going to be recognized, your registration will be recognized. Reason being, all of these graduate attributes that Lebu spoke about that we are in our qualification standard are developed by the International Engineer Alliance in the respective educational accords. We source from the same. USA, New Zealand, Hong Kong, China, Japan, Russia, we are sourcing from the same. So it is going to be easy that when you go there, you're only going to be tested on the local knowledge. So as you can see here, South Africa, and that's the other thing that is also worrying, that South Africa is the only country out of 54 countries in Africa that is the member of the International Engineering Alliance. As, as you can see here, it, it is there at the tip of the south part of, of Africa. So this, as you can see, the Netherlands is not on the Washington Accord. They only came for the agreement uh, purposes and others. So in here, compared to the 28 that is on the Washington Accord, you only have 19. So the professional ones are those that are in red, as you can see. So since then, Exxon never missed the boat. Uh, they've been part of the develop of the establishment of the agreements. Oh, there we are. The Sydney Accord, as we spoke about, is for the what we know as the B of the, of the Bachelor of Technology or the B Tech or the equivalence thereof, substantial equivalence thereof. So these are the for the engineering technologist. And as you can see as well, there, there are those countries that are also not part of this. That because most of the people miss the boat and thinking that the whole idea about the IEA is about the 
the Washington Accord. There are many various accords, as you can see, inside IEA, not necessarily the Washington Accord, but they are coming as well on board. So we are very proud as well as South Africa that we are the mentor to Peru to get them on board uh, so that they can become the, 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 the signatories to the Sydney Accord. So these are uh, 13 as uh, in totality. We can move to the next one. So this is the countries that are the members of the International Engineering Technologies Agreement, which I am chairing at the moment. I've been the deputy chair since the, the June 2013, and I finished my deputy chairship in June 2017, and I took over as the chair. I'm going to finish my term of office next year, June 2021. So the equally so here, these are those that when you qualify, you can only go and work in these countries with regards to that if you are registered as an engineering technologist. We can move to the next one. This is the Dublin Accord. The Dublin Accord uh, is more or less the same is equal. You can just go back to one slide on the, the Dublin Accord is the, it was started in 2016 by only those countries that are there. And these countries by virtue of having had been there, as you can see the others um, have been there for some time as well, but they decided to also form. They did not have the engineering arm of recognition for registration. And there are only nine and South Africa has been there as well as you can see part of the establishment. We can move to the next slide. So when it comes here, USA did not come on board with regards to the recognition of the international engineering technician. And remember some of these things are dictated too by the governments of the respective countries. So sometimes you ask yourself, but why don't you just do the three all at the same time? It is the willpower that also rests in here because IEA, as you can see, it is the alliance that uh, has been formed by these countries that came together or jurisdictions for the purpose of ease of mobility. You can move further. There we are. Now, this is where the core comes in on the international uh, registers. How it works, uh, the internet register is open to any extra registered professional. Now, in this case, they mean the professional, not the candidates, who meets the requirements of the competence agreement as by the IEA rules and procedures. EXA maintains the International Register for Engineers, Engineering Technologists, and Engineering Technicians. And these registers are regulated by the three competency agreements. Namely, I'm looking at the top that the box there that shows IPA, if you remember IPA and AITA. I've left out the APEC one because we are not uh, part of APEC and IET. So what this means is if you get uh, registered at home because the minimum is three years and then you are, automatically on the international register. But for you to get the extra title or postnomial of INTP, it means International Professional Engineer, uh, International Engineering Technologies and International Engineering Technician, under those competency agreements, you need further to register with the International Engineering Alliance. And that is shown on the next slide. That will be shown, I'll talk about it. And move to the next slide. Ah, there we are. Okay. So each member of the IEA keeps its own reg section of the international register within its jurisdiction. So by registering at national, automatically you become on the international register. But there's still another process for you to get that title behind your name. For example, if an ex registered persons are registered in the international register, of South Africa, section of South Africa, those registrants are entitled to use the following post nominals. But there's a caveat to that that will come uh, on the next slide. Ah, there we are. The requirements to register on the international register. Remember, you've registered already at home nationally. To meet the competence agreement standards, the, the interested party shall demonstrate or meet the following requirements. One, have an academic qualification accredited or recognized by EXA, including those recognized through the relevant accords for the category. Be professionally registered with EXA in a relevant category. A category means either in PR Eng, PR Tech Eng, or PR Techni. Have a minimum period of seven years practical experience since graduation. Have a minimum period of two years in responsible charge of significant engineering work. 
and maintain continued professional development at a satisfactory level. So let's talk about this now in, in totality so that we can understand it because that is where the core is and where most of the registered persons would like to get to. I'll, get, I'll make an example of New Zealand. What New Zealand said is they scrapped off the national registration of three minimum three years. They made it seven years. Reason being, when you complete after seven years, you come out with both registrations, the national one, a PR eng at home, and the international one that is going to be for the engineers, I and a P P E. Now in here, you need to register again to be able to use those postonomials that after, if, for example, if on an ideal situation, you'll have registered after three years at home as a PR eng, if I use the, an example of, a, of an engineer. And then you need to go, that three years plus extra four years will make seven years. Then it's then that you can get on the international register to register again, fill in the forms. As you remember, on the national one, we have minimum of one year in a responsible charge of significant engineering work. On the international platform, it is two years. And again, the very same process of maintaining CPD at a satisfactory level as well. So these are the requirements over and above those that we have. So those of you that have already have worked for minim a minimum or more of seven years, by virtue of looking is you are eligible to be registrable on the international register so that you can use the postonomial. What that means when you register at home, automatically you come on the international register. But for you to be able to use those postonomials, you need to have that caveat of having had filled in this application form and being interviewed again, go through the same process of obtaining that so that you can become eligible one on the international register. Okay. I think we've covered that, uh, everything. If you move to the next slide, Lebu, there we are. Now, over and above the international register, EXA has realized that they made what they call the MRAs or mutual recognition agreements with certain countries. For example, with Engineers Australia, is the equivalent of the Engineering Council of South Africa at OMO, EXA, for all disciplines and all categories, all disciplines meaning civil, mechanical, aeronautical, agriculture, you name them, and all categories, meaning that is PR Eng, PR Tech Eng, and PR Techni, they've got a mutual recognition. What that means is that this jurisdiction have established a mutual recognition of their requirements for professional registration and agreed that such registered people of at least a certain period of each of the parties to this agreement will be accorded corresponding registration of the other recipient receipt of a duly completed application for. What this simply means is that is more of a bilateral agreement that they have that is over the international register. In here, you don't get a postonomial or a recognition of a title. It's just that these countries agreed to work with other because we follow, they use the, the leeway of the IEA as we use the same source to get to that. And with Engineers Island, it's all disciplines again and all categories. It's only with Engineering Council UK whereby X I have only in civil engineering as a discipline and only for PR eng. I think I've covered more or less the story. So in it today, as Lebu indicated, we are just giving the why part of why you should register with the engineering council and the benefits thereof. The nitty gritty part of will be the next session that will also be coming at a later stage. I think I've covered that. Thank you very much, colleagues.